because he died in 86 or whatever it was, um, you, you realise that, that, you know, people who go that early, you know, if, if things continue on and stuff keeps happening and, you know, the vast majority of the bad seeds and the visibility of um, the kind of higher profile stuff that's happened with Nick and everything has happened since Tracy died, people tend to get lost back there, you know, and forgotten. It's just, um, it's, it's just the way things operate. So, um, and it becomes harder for people to understand the, the, the place that he had in the scheme of things, you know. It was, it was difficult to explain to Richard Lowenstein when he was doing the, um, the documentary on Roland, you know, just how important Tracy had been, what a, what a big figure he was in the scheme of things for us in all those early years when everything was kind of coming together. And uh, uh, he has been coming up a bit more again lately, which has been quite interesting. Um, uh, but people tend to not understand what his role was, which is also understandable because it was a, a kind of... Um, it, he was a very influential character just by virtue of the way he was and obviously the, his playing and so forth but it's, it's very hard to kind of uh, explain his role in the scheme of things. I mean when, when we formed the Bad Seeds, when we started doing work with the Bad Seeds, it was kind of clear from the outset that Tracy kind of couldn't be there. My theory is that Nick sort of needed to find his uh, experiment with, with some things and um, push the boat out as it were and take some risks and if Tracy had been sitting there sniping at him over his shoulder he just wouldn't have done, he would have been too embarrassed to do some of the stuff that he tried. So he re we really, you know, because he was very, really, uh, we, he was hugely respected, really, you know, he's a very cultured man, kind of fantastic character and he, people sort of think he was this weird cowboy with a moustache and that he was actually a very well read gentleman and one of the funniest guys I've ever known, probably the funniest person I've ever known actually. Even even in the immediate aftermath of the birthday party a lot of people would just say oh you know so the three of you know they'd sort of see who was writing the songs and it was Nick and and of course Roland and I was writing a lot of the music in the birthday party and um, they would assume that we were the three kind of driving forces and it was just like and it's just not the way it, no, you know you could, it, not right because half the stuff we were writing was because Tracy was going to play it on the bass. So then you've got a whole kind of different way into what's going on with the music. You know, so many of those songs are structured around the bass line, and you could just write a bass line and go, play that Tracy, and it'd sound like a million bucks, just sound thunderous, and it was really inspirational. And um, it's really hard to explain. Because it's about you know it's a band it's about the chemistry of the band and and when there's a good one that's you know that there's nothing like it nothing else like it.